Hi folks, so what we're going to be doing in this video is a little bit of uh, 3D modeling and the exercise we're going to be doing is based on this whistle here, okay? We want to be creating this whistle here and it's a little advancement from uh, previous videos whereby we did kind of block figure exercise and we're going to learn some new skills. Um, we're going to be doing it on the program called Onshape, which is a, uh, a free 3D parametric uh, modeling um, software that is uh, free online, it's cloud-based. So, in Onshape, uh, I assume obviously at this stage, if you're watching this video, you have done some previous videos, okay? Uh, you might have seen some of my previous ones where we did some little practice uh, objects here. But what we're going to be trying to create today, if I just click into this one, I have one already modeled previously, is this object here based on the whistle, okay? We're going to try and create that from scratch in this video today, okay? And you can see the various steps that are involved in it. If I was to just uh, find my rollback bar there and just do the various things, We'll start with by making this object, then we will take a little cut away, then we're going to take another little cut away at the front of it, little fillets, then we're going to do adding on this bit here at the back, but just to show you that one there, we're going to add on that there at the back by doing what's called a revolve, then we're going to shell the feature out, which means that it's going to be opening on the inside, it's way it's going to be hollowed out, then we're going to cut a hole in the top of it and finally a couple other little bits and then I think we have a fillet as well there okay so that's what we're actually going to be making today and we'll assign a little color as well that will make it look more like a whistle okay so that's the exercise so if I click up here on bad on my on shape logo it'll bring me back out to the home screen and in that home screen what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on create document and I have to give the document a title over here and that title I'm going to give it is whistle exercise okay previously obviously I have another one that's just called whistle so if you want you can call it whistle exercise and click create okay so just a little bit of a recap from other videos these are all our reference planes okay our front plane if I click in it there you can see it's highlighted over here in our design tree if I click on the top plane likewise and then the right plane Likewise, every one of them can be toggled on and off by clicking on the eyeball. And obviously, you can turn them back on again by selecting the eyeball. Okay, we've got our viewing cube here. So when we click, when we create the object, very easy then for us to select the front face of the object. You can select the corner for the a 3D view, top, right, and so forth. Then you've kind of got different display styles over here. Okay, all our modeling features are up here. So this is a little recap there done, okay? And now what we're going to do is we're going to start the modeling. So based on this little whistle exercise, I've got some measurements here. This is actually from a, a leaving search um, project, okay? But it can be obviously executed on this program as well. So this is the sketch that we have to start by doing. We have to do a circle here, and it tells us to draw it on the front plane. So create the sketch on the front plane using the circle and line commands. So we're going to create a sketch with our origin here in the middle. Of a circle from the top of the circle we're going to do a line then a line down across at an angle and then down to the center and you can see here it says use trim to remove the arc and the line we're going to remove some elements there and then we're going to apply these dimensions okay a uh, radius of 10 for the circle the distance from the end to the end is 40 or you could do it from here to here which would be 30 because we just take the radius off so that would be 30 from there to there rather than 40 from the end four millimeters down, then from this point up to this line, that gap in there is three, and then this line, which is lined up with the center, very important, it's lined up with the center there, is four millimeters long, okay? Then we are going to make that 3D by extruding it using a mid-plane, and I'll explain about a mid-plane when we get to it. Okay, so firstly, I'm modeling on the front plane, so I'm going to deactivate or hide my top and my right planes. Now, I'm going to go up here, just getting into the habit again, we're going to click on Sketch, and I have to select a plane to sketch on. Select a sketch plane. So that plane I want to select is the front plane. Okay, and you can see here, a sketch window is after appearing. Now, I always like to model looking straight at the object, so I'm going to click on the front plane over here on my viewing cube. Now, after, if I'm in an active sketch now, you can see here we've got Sketch 1. I'm going to go up here, and it's very important, I choose center point circle, so none of these other ones, tree point or ellipse, center point circle, you can see it's active when it's highlighted blue, 
I'm going to come down here, hover over the origin, click once, let go, drag out, and when you're happy with the positioning of it, click again. Okay. The next thing I want to do is I want to grab a line tool. So go up to your line command, select this, it's highlighted blue. I want to do it from the topmost point. You can see there the two little symbols that are there beside it, saying that it's a vertical line directly above the center, and then it's touching the circumference of the circle. So it's that point I want to start from, not somewhere over here. I want to be directly above the center. Click, let go, drag the line out. It doesn't matter the distance right now. Click, drag the line down, click, do a line at an angle. Roughly, I'm going to say it's about here. Try not to do it where you can see there, there's a little symbol coming in, like a tangent relation there. You can see the, um, the circle is highlighted orange, the circumference. You want to do it until you just pick a random position. You don't want to give it any conditions. So I'm going to click here, then I'm going to drag into the center and click. That is the rough shape that we want. Now, before we dimension, we want to use what's called a trim command. This is our scissors tool up here. You've got trim, extend, and split. We're using trim. So I'm going to select trim. Now, with trim selectors, I'm going to zoom in. So rotate the wheel on your mouse back towards you. And you make sure you're over the sketch, obviously. If you're not over the sketch, it could go somewhere off the screen, okay, something like that. So if that ever happens, come back here and click on front. It can bring it back into the center. Now, what I want to do is I'm going to zoom in. I want to remove this part of the line and this. So what I'm going to do is, with my trim tool selected, left click on the mouse, left click button holds down, and then drag, you can see a line is coming through the lines you want to cut. And there we go. So I got rid of those two lines by doing that. Just to repeat those steps, trim command selected, click here, drag, drag through. And there we go. Now what we want to do is we want to apply dimensions. So a dimension tool is up here, select this, the first thing I'm going to dimension is my circumference. So select on the edge of the circle, the circumference. And you can see there it's saying R16. So I want that to be R10. So select again and change it to 10. Now that will be the radius of 10, but the diameter is obviously 20. Now the next line I want is the distance for this line. Click, drag up, click. It's very close to it already, but I want it to be exactly 30, 30. Press the enter key. Okay. Then the next line I want is this one. Click on this line, drag out, click again. This one is to be four. Now the next distance I want between this point and this line is three. So select the point and then select the line. You can see it's saying 4.3, it's actually bigger. I want that to be three. And you can see it's after jumping up. Now notice how the sketch is going from blue to black. This line here is still blue and this one is blue. I want this line Click, drag out. I want it to be four millimeters. Make sure that the dimension stays at this angle. Click, four, click. And as you can see, the sketch is now fully defined. It has gone from blue to black. There's our sketch. If you hold down the mouse button, or sorry, the wheel on the mouse, you can rotate the sketch. You can see the sketch in 3D, okay, kind of from an angle. I want it to be, I'm going to go up here to this view. Click on this one here and just zoom in a little bit closer. Now, with that done, okay, I'm just going to show you here really quickly that we can exit our sketch and we can get back into it, okay? Sometimes a student might make a mistake whereby they click on this green arrow. Notice how the sketch is now kind of grayed out. Nothing wrong with that. It's still a perfectly good sketch, but it's not active, okay? If I want to activate that sketch again, I can go over here to my design tree and I can double left click to activate the sketch, okay? So green, I can exit it. Alternatively, I can right click and then left click on edit. Okay, that's another way. But now what we want to do is we want to make that three dimensional. So I'm gonna go up here to my extrude tool, select this, and you can see here straight away, it's after giving me a three dimensional object. So you might know this from previous videos where obviously we were able to pull on the arrow. What I want to do now though, is I'm going to set uh, certain conditions. I want the depth to be 18 millimeters. So I'm gonna change that to 18 first of all. And you can see it's after adjusting there. But what's important here is, I want it to be 18 millimeters, but from the plane that we're drawing on, which is the front plane, I want it to be nine to the left and nine to the right of it. So watch this. Notice what happens here. I go to the right here, where you can see the object. I'll just twist it around a little bit. 
Notice what happens here where it's 18 millimeters coming off of the plane now. If I was to select the arrow, see the way it flips the other side of the plane? I'm actually going to select symmetric. Symmetric means that it's going to be equally 9 millimeters to the left and 9 millimeters to right, adding up to 80. So if I select symmetric, notice how it's gone into the middle there. That means it's gone 9 to the left, 9 to the right. And that's what we want to do for this one. We're going to use the symmetric. Okay, very helpful tool when we're modeling. So now that I've that done, I'm going to select the green arrow to accept. And there we go. Now that I have that done, I'm going to deactivate or hide my front plane because I have something to work with now. Okay, obviously I can always hover over them to see where the planes are. And uh, what I want to do now is move on to the next part of the sketch. So if I just refer back here, now what we want to do is on the top of this object, we want to cut corners off of it, okay? So on the top face, we want to do a triangle that is 20 millimeters long and 1.5 millimeters down. And it says here, <clears throat> it says here, excuse me, create one half of the sketch on the top surface of the whistle using the line command, sketch a center line and mirror these three lines and then smart dimension them. Okay, so that's what we're going to do. And then what we're going to do is says, cut extrude this, okay, and we're going to cut and get rid of it. So we're going to cut that part away then. So that's what we're going to do. So, if I go back into my object, on this surface is the one we're going to select the sketch on. So I'm not selecting on a plane anymore. So I'm going to select sketch, or alternatively I can select this surface and then sketch. Or you could select sketch and then the surface. Okay, so I selected sketch. I'll now select the surface I want to draw on, select. You can see here a plane is after coming in titled sketch number two, sketch number two. Okay. And what I want to do is look at the top of that plane. So now I'm looking at the top of it, not the front. You can see that's after coming in, showing us, look, the top. So select that. You might have to zoom out a little bit just to make it a little bit clearer on your screen. Out there. Now the first thing I want to do is I want to do a center line from this point here all the way to the end. So I'm going to select line. But I want a center line, so I'm also going to select construction. So you can see the two of them are highlighted. And I'm going to start on the origin, click, let go. Notice how the line is not a fully dark line. It's actually kind of a dotted line. It's what's known as a center line, where you have... Deactivate my tool there, guys. Sometimes that happens. Usually should happen if you press the escape button. Okay, now notice how center line is a long dash, short dash, long dash, short dash. That's because it's in the middle. Now what I want to do is I'm going to go to my line command again. This time I'm not going to select construction. And I'm going to start a line anywhere at all along here. I'm going to start right up around here. Click a line. I want to go right to the corner. Click. Drag down here. Click. And bring it back to this point here. Click. So there we have it. There's our line. I want to now add dimensions. So smart dimension this line. I want this line to be 20 millimeters long. I'm just going to move out a little bit. Sorry, bring it to the screen there. And I want this line to be 1.5. Once again, notice how the lines have gone from blue to black. Okay. Now, rather than repeating that sketch and applying dimensions again, it's very easy for me to just mirror that over. So it's like this thing called axial symmetry. We have a mirror tool here. So I'm going to use mirror. I'm going to select this. And straight away, you can see it prompts you select a mirror line. The line I want to mirror that triangle about is this center line. So I'm going to select this line. Now after selecting it, you can see it's highlighted yellow. It says select entities to be mirrored. It's telling me select the lines I want to copy. I'm going to select this one, this one, and this one. And you can see they're after coming over on the opposite side without having to draw them. When I've done that, okay, press escape to deactivate your tool or click the green tick. Okay, notice once again how the sketch has gone grayed out. Okay, now that the sketch, excuse me, now that the sketch is grayed out, okay, I want to remove those sections from the whistle. I want to remove these sections. So, you can actually, you don't have to be in a sketch to actually remove them now that we have that done. So, if I go up here to my extrude tool and I select, instead of add or new, I want to select remove. Okay, now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to select this area here. And you can see there, 
where it's after highlighting it. I'm also going to select this area. And once again, you can see it's after highlighting it, what I want to remove. Now, 25 is probably a bit much. I only probably need about five millimeters. Absolutely fine. You can see kind of where the cut is going down to there. Okay, happy with that. Accept that with the green arrow. And there we go. There's that bit done there. You can see we've kind of got a little angular cut, okay, to kind of taper in the whistle, okay? Now what we want to do is we want a nice round front up here, okay? So that's the next bit we're going to do. But before we do that, we're just going to give these extrudes a name. So if I click on this and press, I'm trying to remember. Oh, sorry, right-click on it. Apologies, that was it. Uh, right-click on extrude one with your mouse and then click on rename. And the first one, Extrude one, I'm going to rename as Whistle Body. Having done that, on the Extrude two, right click on that, rename. And what I'm going to say is Tapered Edges. It's very important that you rename your features because it's easier for me to come back and find what they are rather than just having them Extrude one and Extrude two. Now, the next thing we're going to do, just refer back out, I'll just put this guy right in the middle of the screen. Now, the next thing we're going to do, <clears throat> you can see here we want to get a curved front at the, at the head of the whistle, okay, at the mouth part. So what it says is, create a sketch on the top surface of the whistle using center line and center arc, okay? In this case, we're going to use a circle, okay? Then it says, uh, make sure that the arc is tangential. What that means is, you can see the arc here isn't touching the end piece, whereas in this image, it is touching, so it has to be touching there right at this point, so it's tangential, and it has a radius of 25. Now, this is done for a program called SolidWorks, so we're just going to follow a couple of different set of commands that will get us the same results, okay? So that's what we're going to do. So, we want to sketch on this surface, so I'm going to select Sketch, then select the surface I want to draw. Once again, you can see a new sketch is coming there, it's called Sketch Tree. Looking down on top of it once again, I'm going to zoom out a little bit, there we go. That's just annoying me there. There we go. Happy with that. So first of all, starting with a line, and once again, construction. I'm going to do start on the origin. Once again, a very similar line to the we did previously. I'll do my line to there. Escape the line. Right click and click on escape. Okay. Now what I want to do is I want to grab the circle command. So I'm going to grab this guy. I'm going to do any random circle. Okay. I'm going to start maybe about here. It doesn't matter if you start here as well. I'm going to start about here though. Nice big circle. And I'm going to do it right until it gets to this point here at the end. And click. Okay. Do not worry that we have a really, really large circle sitting on top. Just show it you there in 3D. Do not worry about that. Now what we're going to do is we're going to grab our line command. I'm going to start a line right here at this point. There. Click on that. Bring a line to here. Now I want to bring the line all the way down to here. And likewise, over here. Okay. Next thing I want to do, right click, escape line. Next thing I want to do is I want to give a dimension to my circle. So I'll go to my smart dimension tool. That circle has a radius of 25. So the diameter symbol is up here at the moment. So that means my diameter is 50. Okay. Now you can see everything has gone from blue to black. But what I want to do is I only want a little bit in here and here. So what's the tool that we used previously? Trim. Select trim and watch this. Drag a line through this. There's the circle gone, but you can see I'm still left with the arc. Now I'm going to drag a line through this guy. And then I'm going to do the same here. But what you notice is we're left with these individual spaces in here that are closed off now. But before we actually cut those away, you can see they've gone from black back to blue. So we need to add some dimensions. So often they just want you to reference the origin. So I'm going to click on the origin. Then I'm going to click on this point, And I'm going to give a dimension. You can see there it's 28 by 82. I'll do the exact same with this one. Click on the point. Click on the origin. Be the same dimension. Because it's symmetrical. And you can see it's gone from blue to black. Okay. Now that we have that done. It's going to go into a 3D view here. What I'm going to do. And look the radius is still there. Or the diameter I should say. Now what I want to do is I want to cut that away. So very similar, extrude, remove, and you can see it's removed there. Set it 25, once again, I'm just gonna change it to five, just so we're not going the whole way down. 
doesn't matter really and accept that with the green arrow now you can see there we have a nice round head at the front of it okay so the next thing we're going to do is we're going to add a fillet to our feature okay so this might be something new so it says here <clears throat> what we're going to do is oh sorry i have to rename that as second cut i'll go back and do that but it says apply a one millimeter fillet to the top edges of the whistle so we're going to apply a fillet now what a fillet does is it gives a nice rounded corner okay instead of an, a sharp corner so that's the thing we're going to do now now the first thing i'll do just back in here right click rename and this is just called seconds cut okay if you want you could call it rounded cut if you want it that's what i'm actually going to change it up just something that i recognize because that was a rounded cut there now what i'm going to do is the fillet so your fillet command is up here fillet if i select fillet i need to change the distance to their parameters so the radius we want that to be one not 0 0.25 and then having done that, what I want to do is I want to select this edge here. Notice how it is now rounded. Now that I've selected that edge, I also want to select this one. And there we go. There's that rounded edge as well. So I'm going to accept that with the green arrow. There's my fillet. Now you could do more fillets. I might do maybe one more just to give you an idea. So I'm going to go over here to do a fillet again. This time I'll change it to maybe 0 0.25 press enter and what I'm going to do is I'm going to select this edge this edge you can see they're very small in comparison to the ones above it because I've gone smaller with my radius might select this edge as well there you go and I'll select one more over here yep I'm happy with that and I will accept those with a green arrow okay so there is our kind of rounded edges there I'm quite happy with that so the next bit we're going to move on to is adding on a little uh, portion for obviously where you would tie a rope into the back of the whistle that it can go around your neck so it says here create a sketch below on the front plane using the line and smart dimensions okay and relations remember i said this is all works but this is essentially the sketch we have to do from the center of the circle we're going to do a center line out okay or a line in line with it and we want the line here to be six millimeters long five millimeters up here and then we want a radius or an arc of a circle to have a radius of three. And this line here is to be tangential to it. So we know a tangent is a line that touches an arc or a circle at one point. And you can see it's touching right there. Now we also want this line of five millimeters to be touching the rim of the circle or original circle of radius 10. You can see there it's actually touching it, which means it's coincident with it. So there's a couple of little tricks we're going to have to do here to get that. Okay. So, first of all, we have to select the front plane to sketch on. So I'm going to select sketch, and then I'm going to select front. Now, what I want you to notice here is that our plane that we're drawing on is in the middle of our object. Okay? It might appear when I come around to the front plane. It might appear that it just looks like I'm drawing maybe here in line with the face here, but it's actually in the middle of it. Okay? So, this is how we're going to do it. I'm going to go up here and grab a line command. Now what I would advise you to do is hover over the origin, then drag to the left, and you can see a little kind of tail line coming with it. Now when I get to about this section here, if you're looking at the sketch, I'm going to do a line, and I'm going to do a line up. Okay, just to about there. Okay, I'm now going to press right click on the button, escape isn't working. If I right click and then press escape line, there's my line. You can see here that it's in line with this guy. Okay, I'm now going to do another line from this point out to here. Okay, and the next thing, once again, I'm going to escape my line. Right click, escape line. What I want to do now is a little circle. I'm going to start the circle about here and I'm going to make it out to this point here. Okay, and now what we're going to do just before we do the next little bit, okay is uh, we're going to make sure to see that this point here is touching the circumference of the circle so there's a little way to do that what we're going to do is i'm going to select the line i'm going to just going to simply oh, make sure my circle command isn't active i'm now going to select the line so left click on the line and what i'm going to do is i'm going to go up here to this guy here which says coincidence click on this now what i am going to do is the thing i wanted to be touching 
I'm going to select that. I want it to touch the circumference of the circle. So select this. And what it says cannot be applied to two curves of different types. That's annoying. And I'll just make sure I've done that right now. Apologies there. Okay. Apologies, I probably made a mistake there. There we go. Apologies. To recap that. Slight error there. So what we wanted to do, I made the most slight error of selecting the line. So what you have to do there, if you had to go back there, guys, just click obviously escape or undo up here, and you'll get back to where you want to be. But what I should have done was I should have selected the point, not the line, the point. So if I select the point, then select coincidence, which is this one here, and then select the arc. And you can see what happens is the line will map onto the circumference of the circle. So just to repeat that, Control Z to undo. Select the point, then select coincidence, and then select what you wanted to touch, which is the arc. And you can see how it moves. Okay. Now, the height of that line I want it to be, I'm going to go over here to my dimension. I want this line to be 5 millimeters tall. So notice how it's just moved out and it's still touching it. I want the length of this line to be 6. Okay. Let's bring that into the middle of our screen there so you can see it a bit better. So there's our dimensions. Now I want the radius of the circle to be radius 3. So there's our is that a diameter tree or radius tree. Actually, it's a, sorry, that should be 6. So there we go. So there now is our radius, is it radius tree? Radius tree. Sorry, that's actually a bit large. I think it should be tree is what I should have selected, yeah. Yeah, sorry, apologies for that, guys. That should be a tree. And what I want to do now is I want to do a line from here down to here as a tangent, okay? So to be able to do that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go up here and grab my line command. I'm going to select this point. And I'm going to do a line out like that. I'm not going to touch it. You could do that, but it's a little bit trickier. Now, it's working for me there. You can see a little symbol there that's saying coincidence. But if I move it ever so slightly, you'll see a tangent one might come in. There's the tangent. Now, that will work if I select that. But I'm going to show you another way that I prefer to use. So I'm going to click out there, as I said, and click into the open space. Click. Press escape, or sorry, right click and escape line. Now, I want this line to be tangential to this circle. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select the line, then I'm going to select tangent, then I'm going to select the circle. Notice how it's after moving into it. Now you might have, I have by zooming in there, notice how I zoomed in on the line. See the way I have a little bit of excess? So go to your trim command, get rid of the excess, that's gone. You can now see the point of contact. I'm also going to get rid of this guy, and this guy. And as you can see there, that there is the shape that we want for our sketch. If I just refer back to the, um, if I just refer back here, apologies. You can see there, that was the shape that we wanted. Up five, out six, a tangential line to an arc of a radius three. And obviously the full circle would have kind of gone in somewhere like that. Okay, that's what we wanted. So now what we're going to do is we're going to revolve that. So, what a revolve is, is I'm going to take a profile, which is a sketch, and I'm going to spin it around 360 degrees to help me make a feature. So, this is something new to us. You have extrude, we used before. Now we're going to use this one here called a revolve. Now, when I select revolve, you can see here, here's our sketch profile. It's already highlighted in orange. Face of sketch 4. But you can see in red here, it's asking me to select an axis. So, if I click on this box, now I'm ready to select an axis. So you can see my sketch here. There's my sketch. The line I want to revolve it around is this one. So when I select this, what's actually going to happen here is I'm actually going to create a feature where this shape is going to spin around in a circle to help me make a three-dimensional object. So click on this line as my axis line. And there you go. There is the shape. Okay, so there we have it. That's our revolve. Now, if I was to select 
revolve axis, I'm actually going to get rid of that one. If I was to select this one, just note that the shape would be slightly different, but it would be going into it. Now, that's obviously not what we want. Okay, so just make sure that you've selected the correct axis, which is this one. And there we have it. Select the green arrow to accept. Okay, so you can see that little bit there is at the back of it. Now what we want to do, okay, is I'm actually going to rename that. So what I'm actually going to click on that, right click, rename. I'm just going to call that um, whistle lead. Okay, now in there, what I want to do is I want to create a hole. Okay, so I'm going to create a hole there. Just bear with me. Let's move here because the lights have gone out in the room. There we go. So, to create that hole that I want inside there, once again, I want the plane in the middle. I want the front plane. So, I'm going to select Sketch and I want to select the front plane to sketch on. Okay. Now that I'm on the front plane, you can see I've got sketch number five now. I'm going to go to the front. And I want a little hole right in here. I'm just going to show you where that is based on the image out here. So you can see from the origin, the center, we want a hole that is a diameter of two. And it's 12 millimeters from the center of the circle, the origin. And we want to cut that hole outwards. Okay. So to do that, I'm in a sketch. I'm on the front plane in my sketch, sketch number five. I'm going to select a circle. And I want that circle to be in line with the center point or the origin. So drag over here. I'm in my circle. I'm going to do the circle about here. There we go. Now I want to go to smart dimension. I want the diameter of that circle to be two. And I want the distance from the center. Make sure I'm selecting the center to there to be 12 and you can see the circle has gone in it's 12 millimeters away from the origin and it's a diameter of two now with that you can see it's in the middle of our object okay it's in the middle of our object so what i want to do is i want to cut both to the right and the left like we did previously with the mid plane so now i'm going to go to extrude instead of adding you can see here and look i'll select symmetrical that means you can see it's gone out both sides. Put it back into the middle of the screen there. You can see it's gone out both sides. But instead of adding, I'm just going to simply remove. And there we go. I'm after cutting both to the left and the right. And I'll accept that with the green arrow. So there we go. Now I'm just going to give that a rename uh, as well. Uh, and I'm going to call it, right click on it, rename. I'll just call it whistle uh, lead four. Okay, so there's that bit done. Now the next thing we want to do is we want to hollow out this entire feature. So to do that, we're going to do something called shelling. So if you think of an eggshell, an eggshell is there to contain all the, I suppose, uh, the parts of the egg inside it, okay, keep it nice and encased. Think of this as our eggshell. What we want to do is we want to burst the hole into it. So I'm going to use a shell. So if I select shell, what I'm going to do is it's saying faces to remove here, I'm going to set the distance, and the distance I want to select is 0 0.5, or you can just say, yeah, I'll say 0 0.5, press enter. Now, all it's going to ask me to do now is select faces to remove. I'm going to select this front face here. By selecting that front face there, you can see here it's giving me a profile, okay, showing me what it looks like. Now, if my distance was, let's say, 1 millimeter, press 1, enter, you can see the gap gets smaller. So I need a bigger, I suppose, uh, gap than that. So I'm going to press 0 0.5. And I think that's an appropriate size. I'm going to accept that with the green arrow. Now, in regards to the shell, I'm not going to rename that because that's pretty self-explanatory. But essentially, what that has done is that has hollowed out the inside of the feature. Okay, I'm just going to show you a little trick here now. If you wanted to see what the inside looks like. So if you come over here to your kind of display tools, okay, your camera and render options, click on this arrow. If you select section view at the bottom, select it, it's going to say select a plane, planar, or planar face, cylinder, uh, cone, or so forth. What I'm going to do is section plane, I'm going to select this face, like that. Now watch the arrow. With the arrow, I'm going to click and hold on it, and I'm just going to drag back into the object. And notice what's happening. It's like it's showing me the inside. It's like I'm slicing it in different areas all the time, 
and it's showing me the middle of the object. There you go. And you can pull it the whole way back, obviously that's too far. And you can see the object being created. There you go. That's probably about halfway into the object, showing us the inside portion. If I clicked on the green arrow, it will remain like this. If I wanted to get back to what I originally had, I'm going to go over here to my camera and render options and then just click turn off section view. Turn section view off. And there we go. So there's our object. The next thing we want to do is at the very, very tip top, we want to create a hole in the object for obviously, we usually you'd see a hole at the top where um, I suppose the air escapes out and there's usually a little ball inside here which creates the whistle sound. So I want to sketch on this surface. So select sketch, select the surface to sketch on. There we go. Looking down on top of it. Now this sketch here, we're going to make it very, very easy. I'm going to click on my line tool. I want a hole going from this point right here, that point there. I'm going to go down along this line here. I'm going to bring it down to here. All the way over here to this point and back up. The only dimension we're going to make is if we go to our smart dimension, I want the distance from this line to this line. Oh, excuse me there, made a mistake. I'll have to undo that. There we go. So, smart dimension from this line to this line. I want that to be six millimeters. You can see here it's gone from blue to black. What I want to do now is I want to cut a hole into that. So I'm going to select extrude instead of remove, or sorry, instead of add, remove. But I do not want the hole to go the whole way through the object. I only want it to go down 0 0.5. Press that. Click the green arrow. And as you can see, it's now cut into it, but just on the top face. And there you have it, guys. That there is our whistle exercise complete. The only thing I'm going to do now is obviously just rename this feature. So I'm going to say, click right click on it, rename. I'm just going to say whistle. And I'm going to say sound. Okay. And accept that. And the last thing we want to do is we're just going to apply a nice color to it, okay, to give it more of a look like a whistle, okay, or a whistle. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to right click on the object, or sorry, highlight the whole object by clicking and dragging a box all around it. So you can see here I could do it that way. Or I could just right click on the object and I'm going to say edit appearance for part one. I'm going to click on this and I'm going to choose an appropriate color. So I'm going to go with something like that. And you can see there, that there now is kind of an appropriate color for what looks like a metal whistle. Or alternatively, I could make it out of plastic, let's say, edit appearance for part one, make it black. But I don't think that looks as good because it obviously hides kind of a bit of the detail that we've done. So the one I want is this one. I'll accept that. Okay, so there we go, guys. That there is uh, the whistle exercise completed. Um, once again, obviously you can play around with some of the display styles and little bits there. And if I go back out to my on chip, click on this guy, you can see I've got two of them now. But this one here, the whistle exercise, you can see here, it doesn't look like it's complete there. If I click into it, it should be complete. Okay. So that there, guys, is whistle exercise done. Learn some new little commands there, um, especially with the extrude and we're using the mid-plane reference or symmetrical reference, where we went right and left by extruding. Uh, we did some various cuts, and we were also introduced to a fillet, and the revolve feature. Okay, so that there is the exercise done, guys. I hope you found that helpful.